Halo Infinite had six years in the oven, an estimated $500 million, and the backing of Microsoft. With all this considered, what could go wrong? What the fuck? What did he just do to me? Big kill? Stay by with that ball. Let's see what Bound can do now. The we can get away with. They're testing the waters to see what us as consumers will pay. The prices, and not everything is going to be such good value for money. Three four three Industries, the Halo Company. Wait, hang on. Let me turn on my helmet speaker real quick. <laughs> Alright, there we go. These lads have been working on the Halo franchise since 2008. Fast forward to 2015, Halo 5 Guardians was released with a lot of missing content. Namely, a missing forage mode and a lack of split screen co op. This contributed to Halo 5 disappointing fans. Now, where does Halo Infinite come into the picture? The next Halo game in the series was gonna be great. The main focus of the game was split screen co op. 343 said, Nope. Not making the same mistake twice. During this time, the studio was hard at work developing the Slip Space engine at the same time. Slip Space would allow devs to craft Halo experiences while enabling tastier graphic fidelity. Now, Frank O'Connor said it best himself the Slip Space engine was designed for next generation game development and also to be easier to work with. The only problem is that the development of a game engine is really, really ridiculously hard and expensive. Keep this in mind especially because the developers were also building this next generation Halo game at the same time, on a console that hadn't even been announced or completed yet. At this point, the alarm bells should be going off. Early on in development, word from the studio was bright, and very positive uplifting news trickled in. And then, well, not much really. 343 went virtually silent. Almost no mention of Halo Infinite, aside from isolated mentions, and a video of Pugs. This project had been effectively veiled in secrecy. That is, until 2018 when Halo fans collectively lost control of their bowels at E3. Oh my God. Pants sold out across the country. This short teaser sampled from the Slip Space Engine was new, beautiful, ambitious, dear, Halo Infinite. Oh, it was gonna be great. And then? Nothing. Yeah, again. At least for a while. At this point, I wouldn't put it past fans for being suspicious with the lack of news on the game. No gameplay had been seen by the public eye, locked up deep in 343's vaults alongside Halo fans' virginities. We truly entered the Dark Ages. Fear and doubt began to set in, and you see, gamers weren't just kept in the dark with the state of Infinite but also the state of 343 Industries. This obviously raised many red flags for the first time. What truly was going on inside the studio that was developing the most ambitious Halo project of all time? For months I've wondered as articles churned out spanning Infinite's development indicating something very wrong was going on behind the scenes. Before I go on, I must say that nothing has been confirmed by 343 and Microsoft. And honestly, with the nature and findings of some of these reports, why would they be confirmed? <laughs> Every finding I'm going to be getting into in this video comes from current and former employees at 343. Now, while we may never be able to totally prove the legitimacy of these statements, I believe most of this information, if not all of it, is very accurate judging by the state of Halo Infinite prior to launch, leading up to launch, and post-launch. It all does a great job of explaining and helping us get a good, accurate picture into what went wrong with Halo Infinite. There was suspicion Infinite had a troubled development since the beginning, especially with all the shadiness surrounding the game's progress. In 2019, it became evident that despite the stunning 2018 teaser, Halo Infinite had entered crisis mode. 343 Industries at this time was said to not be exactly unified in their efforts. It was even said that the creative direction of the game was split in multiple directions, where one developer described the process of Infinite as four to five games being developed simultaneously. Yeah, not good news, but it gets, it gets way worse. <laughs> Several developers described 343 as being split into factions with conflicting ideas. Workers at the studio were said to be fighting with each other for company resources. 
Making a game is hard. Making a game and an engine at the same time is very hard. Doing all that and waging war with your own coworkers, that's borderline unimaginable. From the rubble of all this confusion, it was reported that devs would just iron out and patch a game together out of each of the faction's ideas. I don't know how they expected that to go well, but meanwhile, E3 rolls back around for 2019, and Infinite's marketing put on a happy face. Fans finally got a taste of the story and characters of Halo Infinite, along with a cheeky little cutscene. This reveal was rife with criticism though. Fans are beginning to become frustrated with the lack of gameplay shown off from Halo Infinite four years after Halo 5 released. Fans basically just scoffed at it, okay? More cutscenes? When is this game coming out? Funny that people want to see the gameplay of a video game. It's, it's shocking, I know. But in December of 2019, the new Xbox console, Xbox Scarlet, was announced. This game system needed a flagship title by the time it launches in late 2020. The pressure at 343 to deliver this ambitious title was undoubtedly mounting. 343 Industries is not a small company. There are hundreds of workers on board, but this is also one of its greatest weaknesses. Not what you're thinking, it's not the size, it's not the bigger they are, the bigger they fall type of thing. It's that much of the workforce at the studio was supplemented by short-term contract workers, where many were cut loose from the company after only 18 months of work. This regular attrition did nothing to assist in this troubled development. Along with contract workers as well, 343 outsourced a significant portion of Infinite's development to third-party studios. This was according to an anonymous source, but 343 chose not to comment on this report. Outsourcing can cause a multitude of issues. Yes, it can help with a large project and assist in labor shortages, which gee, I wonder what we could have done to solve that labor shortage issue, but quality control, communication, and company morale issues are very common and serious side effects of outsourcing. It is a fact that there was outsourcing from 343, but the severity of outsourcing is debatable. The stress of the split workplace seemed to be too much. The foundation of 343 began to crack. Hey, <laughs> it actually works. Later that summer, 343's creative director and executive producer left the company. To make matters worse, another high-ranking employee at 343, Chris Lee, left the company in October of 2020. He was a long-term employee in the company, working at Microsoft in the early 2000s and working on Halo since the year of 343's inception back in 2008. He'd only been the director of the Halo Infinite project since 2016. At the time, Microsoft urged fans not to panic reassuring them that these big departures were not due to a troubled development. From here on out, Microsoft and 343 just defaulted to pulling the yeah, that's not true dog card to save face. It's obvious that these were kind of just cover-ups at this point, because picture this. Imagine you're trying to drive to this store, but you don't have just one backseat driver, but like 200 who are all shouting at you. Also, you paid a bunch of other people to shout at you as well, and some of the people who are yelling at you are just jumping out of the car randomly. Yeah, I'd quit too. The creative direction of Halo Infinite was split, confused, and now lacking leadership. Even worse, there were reports that the top dogs of 343 were busy assisting with the creation of the Halo TV show and diverting their attention from the project to that dumpster fire. I mean, that TV show. 343 later denied this claim. The ship was adrift, lost with all hands and with no discernible captain. Beset by all these compounding issues and facing the devs at 343 was a brand spanking new engine, an open world game with a map editor, online multiplayer, custom games, a theater mode, deep and varied customization akin to Halo Reach, and then... Coronavirus. That's not surprising. The most ambitious Halo game of all time had been scaled down significantly. Around this time, Xbox executives were pissed. Where is my Halo game? 343, where did- What did you do with my Halo game? And frightening news of the planned release of Halo Infinite being in pieces began circulating. Heads up, 
marketing's back. We finally got a taste of gameplay. The campaign demo was shown off to... a mixed reaction. The engine was clearly not working out how they wanted. Improved graphic fidelity was the focus of the engine, and this showed, as the game demo looked almost as good as Half-Life. Halo Infinite was then delayed from a winter 2020 release to 2021. It was very obvious at this point that the game was not ready. Stress at 343 was likely running very high. Disaster was in sight. The leaders of the company appeared to be ineffective at salvaging this four-year train wreck disaster catastrophe. And then... Joseph Staten came swooping in on a silver falcon. This champion among men survived Halo 2 development's harshest working conditions. We're not asking to work shorter days, we're asking to work as hard as we're working right now, but just two weeks. The mastermind of Halo's original success back before 2010, Joe was confirmed to be joining the team as Halo Infinite's project lead, and a sugar-coated headline was produced. 2020 was the year for Halo Infinite to make a turnaround, and what better man to guide it along? Halo did miss the release window of Xbox Series X, but it now had a chance of survival. 343 began doubling down their efforts as well to throw together a new Halo as the race against time began. Halo Infinite at this point changed drastically in design and philosophy from the past Halo games, while strangely mimicking their core gameplay almost to a T. The art style and gameplay would blast back to 2007, but the business model and progression system became symptomatic of the live service craze of the 2020s. Now the multiplayer would be free to play to entice more players to jump on the game. You want to unlock armors akin to Halo Reach? Not anymore my guy, that'll cost you your hard earned V-Bucks now. Halo had gone full on live service, and at this point it was known that the rumors of releasing the game in pieces was now reality. Summertime of 2021 rolled around, and Bonnie Ross, the head of 343 Industries, kicked off the new Halo reveal. Finally, sweet, sweet multiplayer gameplay, but with graphics that don't look like Play-Doh to boot. This game looked great. Despite the trials and tribulations, Halo Infinite truly turned itself around. The rumored $500 million in reported crunch development seems to have paid off. I was sold by this reveal, and the hype train was in full swing, but then... The unthinkable happened. The multiplayer launched before the campaign in November, a whole month early. After playing Halo Infinite at launch, I can confidently tell you that it's my favorite game of the decade. Halo had truly returned. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and remember to leave a comment if- I wish that could be the end of the story. Despite the amazing launch month and subsequently solid but not perfect campaign, things were very, very wrong. Microsoft confirmed 20 million players at launch week. How do we get from 20 million to here? Well, server desync, melee attacks not connecting, buggy UI, buggy menus, kicking players from games, kicking players from parties, just booted you from our party. Custom games modifications not applying, custom games long loading times, loading screen for eternity, loading screen intro bug. Okay, that one was actually pretty funny though. Big team battle down for months. Games that never started, games that never ended. Theater mode tracked wrong players, corrupted theater films. Theater broke after one film viewed. Did I mention server desync? Yeah, I really hated the server desync. Pro scene server issues. Esports kicking players mid championship. Oh, What's happening? No. Oh. Bro. Challenges not completing bug. Overly difficult challenges. Challenges that encouraged poor gameplay. Broken ranked CSR statistics. Broken matchmaking. Big team party nameplate coloration issues. Big team battle unbalanced vehicle spawn bug. Campaign sometimes didn't grant unlocked cosmetics. Lack of interesting battle pass rewards for free players. Bots not spawning at all, ninja no clips, controller issues, very slow progression for week one. Okay, you get the point. And we're not even talking about the missing content. It was obvious that 343 was forced to cut two thirds of the game, as the open world was actually quite small. Kind of disappointing. And then there were cut modes, vehicles, and weapons that are still hidden in the source code. For a Halo, no. A game to succeed, it needs to follow up on previous installments and match their quality. 
Here's what Infinite was missing. Missing Forge mode, missing game modes, missing reach style customization that was promised. No Team Slayer queue until weeks after launch. They blamed the engine restricting the UI on this one. Nice. No free for all at launch, no infection, and no specialty game modes, no co-op campaign. Despite their focus on it from 2016, infinite, more like less than finite. <laughs> Dude, the game even has less content than the multiplayer trailer. Like, give me that build. I want to play that one. Infinite also disappointed fans further with an overpriced cosmetic shop, where despite 343 informing fans that they could unlock everything through normal gameplay, many armor pieces were locked behind ridiculously high paywalls. Like, these are some steep prices, some of which were downright hilarious. By charging $7 for the color brown, 343 explained that the game was a live service game, and that missing content, as well as new content, would be coming soon. Unfortunately though, months would go by, and with Season 2 being delayed 3 months, and a lack of meaningful updates to Infinite, it became evident that Halo Infinite was indeed very unfinished, rushed, and troubled. How could a game in development for 6 years be rushed? Well, that may not in itself be true. Some estimates place the game at a three and a half to four year development time, and with the struggling, divided, and overworked team and pandemic knocking on Halo's door, the team may have been working around the clock up to the hour before release. At this point, despite the move to free-to-play and the cross-platform support from PC to Xbox, that 20 million player number shriveled up fast. I mean, like, blisteringly fast. Sure, the graph is Steam players only, but if we do some math of Steam to Xbox player ratio, based on what we know... Wait, that's all that's left? You can also tell because my YouTube views cratered along this curve. But that's besides the point. Halo Infinite isn't disliked because Halo is not fit for a modern audience. It only fails to mimic the successful live service systems already released. They set out to match this new genre of which they had little experience in, and either due to a lack of content available in-game, or lack of knowledge on how to execute it properly, it was engaging to very few and turned most fans away. The game plays it safe with minimal features, and everywhere you turn you get swamped by bugs. This game was borderline unplayable for half a year, so people left. But they'll be back, surely. Oh hey, it's May, of current year. That means Season 2 is launching! Not a moment too soon. Hurry, Spartans. We must save the player base. No. No. I give up. Turn off the video. Well, this game is kind of a disaster. Halo fans waited six months and the game is still broken. When multiplayer launched early, it was claimed to be a beta. Everyone believed Infinite would be ready a month later. In its current state, it is still a beta. After months of bug fixes, Months of store price drops and numerous attempts of disaster control, the coveted second season of Halo Infinite released with two maps, a couple of modes, and more stuff to steal your mom's credit card over. Also, the dreaded big team battle nameplate coloration bug returned as well as, uh... Wait, they bro- You're telling me- They broke shooting. Yeah. So the battle rifle now jams randomly. They broke shooting in a shooting game. Brilliant. We're kind of beating a dead horse with the amount of issues this game has. 343 Industries for some reason cannot work in their own engine. Every time they update Infinite, they break another part of it. Since release, the devs have been complaining that there are significant engine limitations that are blocking their attempts to fix the game. So there went the whole idea of the engine. At its core, Slipspace was supposed to ease the development of Infinite while supporting further graphical fidelity. And I'm not even gonna talk about this game's poor performance on high-ended systems. All of these long-term issues are symptomatic of the troubled development that was hinted at for years. Each of those claims, that were either denied or not by 343 and Microsoft, are now far more believable to be accurate. And that's where we leave off. Creative differences. High-profile resignations, a virus, an expensive engine, the most ambitious in the series, contract workers, outsourcing, a grappling hook, and a funny monkey. Ladies and gentlemen, Halo Unlimited Sadness. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have been disappointed with this game for months now, and always wondered what to blame for this game's state, or who to blame for this game's state. After some digging, I figured I'd explain it to you guys. We may never know the exacts, 
but we can make educated guesses based on what we know and what we can find through these articles and reports. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, drop a comment and let me know what you think and what you think the future of Halo is going to look like. Anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Y'all have a good one. See ya.